To view the points in the VCCX controller using BACnet, you need to use a program called a BACnet Explorer. I have chosen to use a program called Yet Another BACnet Explorer, or YABI for short. It is a free program you can down from the, download from the internet. There's no registration fees, there's no uh, time limits or anything like that, so it's a cheap and easy tool. Uh, so we're going to use that for our demonstration here. So I've got my uh, USB to 45 adapter connected up to my controller right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a device. So I'm going to click on this button here. And it will pop up this window here. Now we need to set up this section right here because we're doing BACnet communications over MSTP using a serial port. So I'm going to do a port. I'm going to choose my COM port that my USB to serial adapter is connected to. Then I'm going to choose my baud rate that my controller is set up at. So I've got it set up for 38.4 or 38,400. We need to set the MAC address that the computer is going to use for the MSTP network. So I have chosen to set my computer's BACnet address to 127 for demonstration purposes. I'm also going to set my max masters to 127. The max frames, I'm just going to leave at 1. Now I'm going to click the Add button. This is going to start populating right up here. So it has pulled up the device controller, which is device ID number 151,241. So that's the device ID. And here's the MAC address of the controller I'm communicating to. It happens to be MAC address 1. So I know, just by looking at this, all of the hardware is working correctly on the VCCX controller. This would not show up if there was a problem with the controller itself. I can also verify that the MAC address and the device ID are set correctly. So I'm going to click on this device, and the computer will start pulling in all of the BACnet points within the VCCX controller. It's going to take about 30 seconds to pull them, all, pull them all in. Once it's complete, you can scroll down and see all of the points. Now it's going to start off with the analog inputs, which are status-only points. You cannot write to these points. They're read-only. So these are going to be status points of anything that is a decimal related value or a changeable value besides on and off. The next set, and there's 150 of those analog input status points right now. The analog values is the next section, and these are read-write points. So these are things like set points, uh, sensor, overrides, uh, mode overrides, anything that has a value uh, different than just 0 and 1. So these are going to be your analog values. And again, they're read-write. And we have 93 of those currently. And then we have binary inputs. Once again, inputs are status only. So these are going to be your binary statuses. So anything that is a 1 or a 0 for a status, for example, a relay. That would be a binary type status. So we have approximately 126 of those. Now, as it shows right now, it's only showing the name analog input number one and two and so on and so forth. Yabi has the ability to pull in the description of each of those points, but there's you have to do it manually. So if you click on this point here, it's going to pull in the description of that point and its application software version for analog input number one. To see the value of that point, you look over here at the properties. And currently it says the present value is 1.41. So this is the current version of software running on the VCCX controller. Now you can individually click on these or you can use the standard Windows trick by just clicking on the top one highlighting it, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, and then hold your shift key, and then click on the bottom one. Now it's going to give you the little spinny circle status cursor, and once it's done, what it's doing during this time is it's pulling in the descriptions for all of the points. 
it takes up to a minute to do this. So just be patient and it will pull them all in. All right, it has pulled all the descriptions in. So now I can see what each of the points descriptions are. And again, these are just the analog inputs. See, this, these are the status points. So if you wanted to look at the uh, space temperature, the current space temperature, I can just click on the space temperature point. And once again, just go over to the properties and it will tell you what your present value is or your current value. Right now, my space temperature is 76.3 on my demo panel. If I wanted to see a change, I'm going to change it on my demo panel. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. Now, notice it didn't change automatically. It doesn't. This screen does not auto-update the way I've got Yabi set up. So in order for this, to, the easiest way to get this to show the new value I have found is just to click on another point and then click on the point that you want to see again. And now it shows the current value of 73.3. To change a set point using Yabi, I'm going to scroll down until I get to the analog values. So now I'm in the analog values. And the first setting here is the occupied cooling set point. I'm going to click on that. Currently, my occupied cooling set point is 75 degrees. If I want to change that using Yabi, I can highlight it and type in my new value. So I'm going to put 76 in there, and I'm going to press Enter. And that sends it to the controller. So if I click on another point, and then come back to the occupied cooling set point, it still says 76, so it accepted it into the controller. You can also hook up your PRISM software and see the change in there as well.